First, a little bit of information about Qualcomm and who we are to set the context as to why I'm standing up in front of all of you guys uh, right now. So, um, we call ourselves mobile natives. We say we were born mobile. We've been in business for 25, uh, over 25 years now. Uh, and um, our drive is specifically on mobile. Many of you may know us as um, the world's largest fabulous uh, semiconductor company. Um, with over a billion Snapdragon chips shipping in devices around the world. Uh, and we very much focus on um, advanced software technologies to drive the uptake of these devices because we know it's absolutely essential to have a compelling user experience on a bunch of devices worldwide. And today we're talking about Vuforia, our mobile vision platform. Our role in the industry, we are very lucky to have the position that we do in the ecosystem right at the center in supplying handset manufacturers with world-class processing capability and in supplying application developers with software development kits to produce best-in-class mobile applications and services. If any of you have seen how many people are in this room at the moment, it really is quite intimidating. So um, what we're doing is we're pushing the wireless boundaries. We're so solving very, very complex in I issues in the mobile industry. And we'll touch on some of those when we look at digital eyewear as an example and some of the challenges that we've addressed there. We're driving the uh, device evolution. We're making sure that devices out there have got the greatest processing capacity, have got the best camera capabilities, have got all of the features and functions that will allow you, the creative application developer community, to provide world-class applications and services. And we're pushing very hard to cover what we call and create what we call the digital sixth sense, which is that relationship between the digital and the physical world. And you'll see a whole bunch of examples as to how that is um, very well achieved using, uh, using Vuforia and the software, uh, the software development kit. So it's where the digital, as I say, bridges the, uh, bridges the physical. And that leads on very neatly to um, Vuforia, Qualcomm's mobile vision platform. Here's an example of some applications that have been designed using our SDK. for that quick stutter, it was an error between user and keyboard. So um, why are we here at the Unity Developers Conference? Well, a whole bunch of those uh, sophisticated audio-visual animations that you saw overlay on the targets and markers were designed using Unity. And we know that we have a strong partnership with the de facto production and development environment for developers who want to produce, again, best-in-class uh, animations and those kind of features and functions. One of the questions that I've had quite regularly today at the exhibition stand is, is this a gaming platform? It is not just a platform on which you can design games. It's a vision-based platform on which you can design, design applications for a whole bunch of vertical markets. Interactive products where consumers can have a digital overlay with a physical product. You've seen kids playing with toys. Our SDK allows you to scan those toys into the application and then overlay with some kind of digital performance. You could just be launching a website 
website, you could be launching a video, or you could have uh, an audio-visual extravaganza associated with that particular image where you can key off against that. Shopping, where applications have been used whereby consumers can see what an item would look like in, in their home. What would a large screen TV, screen TV look like? What might a new chair look like? So it's the opportunity to give the consumer a further informed decision about purchasing goods. Or instructional, you could be in an education environment, you could want to give somebody information, further information about how to use a particular product, white goods, telephones, or whatever that might be. And it's the opportunity then to be able to impart more information. Because what the platform allows you to do is essentially build an application that sees something and does something. And we'll have a quick look under the covers and show you how that, uh, how that works a little later on. Market traction, you saw some of the big figures in the, uh, in the promotional video. Um, uh, over 150,000 downloads of the software development kit. I'm pleased to say that a whole bunch of those are in Europe. I'd like to think it's all about me, but it's not. It's about the stability of the product. It's about the, the capability of the production environment. Um, and over 15,000 applications um, have now been produced um, uh, across both Android and uh, and and iOS. And you can see we launched in 2011, 2015. Now, we, as I say, we have over 15,000 applications powered by Vuforia, which have been downloaded around the world. And this is a really impressive figure. 175 million app installations, applications that are powered by, uh, powered by, um, powered by Vuforia. So there should be no doubt in anybody's mind about the capability of the product and the maturity of the product. A whole bunch of awards uh, under our belts, but also under the belts of our application developers. And that's very important. We produce the enabling technology, and we're pleased to see that we have won some awards for doing that. But it's about the creative, creativity of the application developer community, making applications that are best in class, best in breed, innovative, and brand new. One of the latest is Lego Fusion, uh, Town Master by Lego. I've got that running on the stand. Come and have a look at it. it really takes some fantastic advantage of, um, of Euphoria and really shows how you bridge the digital and the physical world. Not just that, but it's about the value that um, these kinds of applications and augmented reality can bring to your customers. It's about the value that it can bring to major brands. Just a quick snapshot, 37 of the uh, 100 interbrand, um, uh, 100 uh, top highest brands measured by Interbrand use um, Vuforia. Of the total number of published applications, 23 of those have 2 to 10. That is very, very relevant because that means that along with their digital design agencies and the app developers, they are return customers. They've come back, they want to use Vuforia as the platform on which they are distributing their applications because it brings stability, because it is robust, because it ensures that they can maintain their brand integrity and all of the values against which they hold very, very uh, high and important to them. So I think it's important to show that there are return customers amongst those, uh, amongst those major brands. Why Qualcomm? Why Vuforia? Um, what Vuforia delivers as a mobile vision platform uh, is the best experience in, uh, in, uh, in many and most environments. When you see the demonstration running on the stand, when you see the demonstrations there, you'll see the speed with which an application picks up a markering system. We have a very flexible markering and, uh, marker and targeting system. I'll have a look at that a little later on. You need to pick up that marker instantly because the consumers expect an instant response from their application. If you want to key your experience and anchor your experience against that marker, you need the best tracking ability so that you don't lose that marker every time the consumer is using around, moving around. And you'll see some quite aggressive gaming experiences where you're moving the device around and it tracks against that marker and holds that gaming experience. So it's utterly, utterly reliable. Another of the reasons why major brands are committing with their application developers to the platform. And it's about creative empowerment. We're integrated. We work very closely with the Unity guys because we know that as a production environment, it's giving you guys the opportunity to produce fantastic audio visual experiences and then overlay those in a real world environment. Here's another video to show you some examples.
So let's now have a look, quick look at the platform and um, a very shallow dive under the covers as to exactly what you can achieve and how flexible that target and markering system is. So the first thing is the recognition of images. A whole range of images and a whole number of brands have made a commitment and produced applications based on Vuforia alongside the application development agencies. One of the things that they don't want to do is to have to, in many instances, is to have to specifically design a markering system for the application to work. A whole number of magazines, as an example, and you can see one there with uh, Maxim, they're not going to redesign the front cover of their magazine so it works as a marker. The primary purpose of the front cover of a magazine is to sell the magazine and the content in there. So if they want to launch launch a digital experience using their front cover, they have to have ensure that they have the most flexible solution available to them. And I'm pleased to be able to say that Vuforia can deliver against that. Shapes, sizes, colours, um, dimensions to images as well are also um, available and we can also manage those within the, uh, within the environment. So incredibly flexible for the recognition of those images. And again, you saw how quickly it picked up and then performed, delivered a render on top of, uh, on top of that. We also have the ability to reconstruct particular environments. Um, and uh, what that essentially means is using something that we call Vuforia Smart Terrain. Um, I have that running uh, also with uh, a, an application on the stand called Shutter, uh, Shutter Isle. Um, by UI Evolution, and that shows how you can then map a particular terrain. So not only using a markering system, but you can add additional items and turn that into your gaming environment. So I've got a packet of Pringles and I use one of the Lego boxes, and what it will then do is render a number of predetermined images on top of those. I can have a tall tower if I have a large Pringles pot, or I can have a small tower if I have a coffee pot. And I can then start to take, as a user, start to build my own gaming environments. And it's very um, interactive and, uh, and immersive in that fashion, so creating my custom, uh, my custom spaces. It's available for today's smartphones and tablets, and it's supporting camera technologies of tomorrow. So we are camera agnostic in that instance. We work very closely with um, application developers and device manufacturers who are looking at different um, abilities to measure depth of, uh, depth of field with, um, with, with cameras, as an example. And again, because of that privileged position that we are in in the ecosystem, we get very early notice of the sorts of devices that will be shipping as standard in the future with advanced camera capabilities, as an example. So Smart Terrain allows you to further extend the markering, um, the markering ability. had a drink of water during that one but I've got a bunch more videos to show you so I'll take advantage of that in a bit. Now what we can also do is recognize objects. So the ability to have uh, along with Vuforia object scanner um, uh, what you could have is here you've got um, a scenario with some kids who are scanning around a toy, a, a, a three-dimensional item as an example and this again is being deployed commercially. Um, come and have a look at the Lego Fusion, um, uh, the Lego Fusion um, demonstration running on the stand. So you could for example detect and track toys, uh, action figures or objects that are similar to that. You can understand why, the, ga why the, um, the, the, the traditional, the physical games companies would be very interested in ensuring that their consumers, who they recognize are using mobile devices as their primary entertainment devices, would want to be able to bridge that gap. How can you keep a physical toy engaged with a digital device in some fashion? So 
the object recognition and the ability to be able to scan those objects is an opportunity that these guys can take full advantage of. You can enable new playing patterns, you can extend toys and the way that they're played with those mobile devices and the physical toys. And to do that is, as I say, with the Vuforia Object Scanner app. Quick example of some of the um, supported objects, action figures, vehicles, models. There are a number of things that you do need to have there um, with, within that environment. It needs to be a rigid toy, so not flexible and, and wobbling around all the time, uh, and also strong visual, um, visual design. But it's still a very powerful and extensive, uh, and extensive tool. So let's have a look at a quick video of, um, of some... So we published the um, SDK from our website, you'll have seen the URL come up on a number of occasions and I know as I say there are a number of familiar faces in the audience. I know a bunch of you guys are already working with the SDK and have got commercial applications deployed. Um, you've seen the figures, 150,000 um, downloads of the SDK, 15,000 applications have been produced and one of the most recent additions to the SDK is our digital eyewear. Um, it won't have escaped your attention, I'm sure, that virtual reality is uh, really at the top of many people's um, uh, targets at the moment, and there are a whole bunch, quite rightly, of, um, of, of, uh, com uh, of, of speakerships that are, that are specifically looking at virtual reality. And what we feel is that there's a wonderful opportunity to integrate virtual reality and augmented reality, almost augmenting virtual reality, if that's not too much of a mouthful. So what we've done is we've published an SDK. That's now available as a public public beta on our website, so if you haven't, please do go and have a look at it. You can see that we support Samsung Gear, uh, Epson Mo uh, Moverio and the ODG R7. I was asked a little earlier what the ODG R7 is. It comes from an organisation called Osterhout Group. Um, and uh, again, we're looking at the, the support that we provide, which is both on Android and iOS. So we feel that there's a very strong opportunity of integrating virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, we focus specifically on stereoscopic and binocular um, experiences, so look into and look through. Uh, and the, here are a few examples coming up of um, use cases where developers have got hold of the SDK, uh, the public beta version, which you can all download, and have started to, uh, have started to work with that. if I can get my slide to move on. There you go. more. It's going to get a bit like a disco here if the lights keep coming up and down. Although I am also... Sorry, just one more. Let me go back. One more for you to see. What I want to show here is that there are a whole bunch of different environments in which you can use um, a whole bunch of different vertical markers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, and now let's have a quick look at uh, technically, and I'll go very high level on the technology and can talk in a little more detail, if you like, on the, uh, on the exhibition stand. So as a software vision platform, what do we provide? Simply put, um, we allow the application to recognize images, objects, text recognition, we can also have user-generated markers, uh, and meshes, so smart terrain as an example of, um, as an example of those meshes. Mes the SDK is available for mobile and digital eyewear um, devices, uh, iOS and Android, Xcode Eclipse, but what we're here clearly to talk about today is the integration also into Unity as your chosen, uh, as your chosen production environment. The components that we provide as an end-to-end -end platform. The first is the engine um, and the number of devices that that supports. That's where we have invested a tremendous amount of effort in ensuring that we have the best algorithms that we can possibly produce and the most efficient algorithms that we can possibly produce for you guys to ensure the robust stability that you and your customers will demand. Supporting both phones and tablets and also, of course, as you see with eyewear. Um, there are a whole bunch of SDK uh, 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 SDK versions available um, to support, as I say, Eclipse, um, Xcode, and, and here today to talk about Unity. Then there are the tools available for you. A lot of people will come up and say, will this work as a marker? We have something called Target Manager. You'll see a quick screenshot of that and a couple slides on. Target Manager allows you to upload a bunch of images that you might want to check out as being targets, and we give those a five-star rating on the, uh, on the website. Object Scanner it, uh, allows you, uh, as you saw, the consumers, the kids there to uh, scan around a 3D object and then import that into a digital um, environment. And then there is eyewear calibration. And you can only imagine the sorts of challenges that one has to address in regards to the production of a software development kit that works in a digital eyewear environment. Um, for example, you, the, 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 the key that you have and the, the low latency that you need to ensure between the marker, the camera, the application and the consumer's eye. So that has to be worked out very efficiently and performed in a very efficient manner. And then finally we have cloud services. Cloud services allows you online, allows you to uh, extend the total number of markers that you could have within one particular application, anything up to uh, a million as you see the figure there. And Vuforia web services, which is your web-based interface to be able to manage those targets and uh, those targets and markers. We've already had a quick look there at the, um, the digital eyewear that we support. Um, you, you see there the Epson Mav Mavirio and the Samsung Gear. Um, so as we were talking about uh, optical see-through and video see-through, the opportunity to be able to augment a virtual reality environment, have triggers around in an environment that will add an extra dimension and an extra level of, of um, interactivity in those applications. And I've already touched on the challenges that you face in the production of delivery, in, in the production of of and the delivery of digital eyewear software development kits. Uh, registration is, uh, is absolutely critical, so you need to ensure, we need to ensure we are giving you the opportunity to produce and develop um, and have a calibration app and APIs um, to be able to achieve that capability. And ultimately, we'll be looking at the, uh, the eye, tracking, uh, eye tracking cameras in the longer term. Uh, registration, minimizing uh, what our marketing guys are called the motion to photon latency. Um, so the time that it takes to get from the camera to the the display pipeline and ensuring that they are highly optimized and of course we wouldn't be Qualcomm if we weren't ensuring that it was all happening within a certain power and thermal um, a thermal envelope um, we recognize that you need efficient drivers in order to be able to deliver these sorts of solutions I've already mentioned that we're in a very privileged position in the ecosystem to be working with device manufacturers who have cameras that will be shipping way into the future uh, we know that the rates required 60 frames per second we know that for a display you're not going to need anything from 100 to 120 megahertz. All of these we are addressing for you to give you a solid platform on which you can then get creative and start producing fantastic applications and services. Target Manager, as I mentioned, keeping an eye on time as well, Target Manager allows you to upload, uh, dynamically upload targets and then run through a rating process. I've seen this used. I was with a record label not so long ago, and one of the key questions from the artists themselves was which of my um, CD covers would work as a markering system. So one of the guys, the, the digital design agency we were with, uploaded all of the CD covers that they pulled down from an Amazon website and very quickly got an evaluation that seven of the 11 were a five-star rating. So you can very quickly take a decision on behalf of yourselves and your customers as to whether a target is um, is, is, is good and, uh, and a high value target in, uh, in that respect. 
So here you can see exactly what you would see if you were to upload a marker, a, a, a potential marker in Target Manager, and you can see all of those little yellow dots where it's evaluating what would work particularly well for the, um, for the visual, recognition, uh, visual recognition capability. One of the additional platform components that I've touched on is cloud services. That allows you to extend the total number of markers that you have within the, uh, within the application. Uh, and web services I've already mentioned, which is um, your means by which you can manage those markers and those uh, online markers within a particular application. Uh, I'll skip over this one as well. Uh, that's fantastic. That's why I'll skip over this one as well, because Microsoft PowerPoint has apparently stopped working, which is, uh, which is maybe its way of telling me that I've only got two minutes left anyway. So let me hit escape. Oh, fantastic. It may take several minutes, and I haven't got several minutes. Um, they always say that uh, presenters are only as good as their slides, or uh, you should be able to present without your slides. I'm pleased to say that I can present without my slides, because I've only got a couple left anyway. And I think, actually, uh, I will take this as an opportunity to wrap up and say that um, hopefully what I've given you today is a, uh, a snapshot of the end-to-end -end solution that Qualcomm provides within our um, mobile vision-based platform, Vuforia. The SDK is available to download um, and has been available for a number of years. You've seen the total number of applications that have been produced um, using, that, uh, using the software development kit for worldwide brands on a regular basis. You've seen that there are over uh, 175 million downloads loads of Vuforia enabled um, applications from the developer community. You've seen that the digital eyewear is, uh, is available for you right, uh, right now. And I am, it really has totally gone, here you go. I do want to get one last slide in. It's not back soon. It's, um, can anybody see where my, the, no, it's not that one. The reason I want to get this one in is because uh, it's talking about the competition, um, the Unite Developer competition. There you go. Let me jump to the final slide, assuming it doesn't fail on me this time around as well. There you go. Fantastic. So my final slide, which I was very keen to get across, which is uh, our invitation to you guys to join the uh, 2015 Vuforia Vision Awards. Um, the application, the successful application will be chosen by you, the, uh, the Unity uh, developer community. You can see it's a pretty hefty cash prize, which I'm sure none of you would want to turn down. And the deadline to enter is July the 30th. It's been an absolute pleasure standing up in front and presenting to you guys. I hope I coped with that failure in PowerPoint right at the end. I will be over in the exhibition hall, so when you guys have enjoyed the next presentation, do please come over and ask me a bunch more questions. Otherwise, you may see me staggering around at the party a little later on this evening. It's been a pleasure.